Hello, thank you so much for listening to the Live to 110 podcast. My name is Wendy Myers. Today we're gonna be talking about a very important subject, EMF radiation. This is a huge, huge problem in our society today. And a lot of people that are really concerned about their health don't have it on their radar. And so I wanted to do this show today with Daniel Debon. He's the owner and CEO and founder of DefenderShield.com. And I use a number of his products. Uh, I use his his uh, headphones, I use his uh, Defender Shield laptop uh, EMF absorber underneath my computer, and he's got a lot of other wonderful products and is a wealth of information and expert in EMF and the health issues that EMF causes. And we're gonna provide you with a number of solutions uh, and uh, tips so that you can protect yourself and your family from EMF. It's a growing cause of cancers and leukemia and uh, sleep issues. People don't realize that EMF dramatically disrupts their body's ability to sleep and regenerate. And over the long term, that causes all kinds of health issues. So a very, very important podcast uh, that we have today on the show. Daniel Debon is an internationally recognized expert in EMF radiation, EMF shielding, and EMF-related health issues with special focus on the effect of exposure from mobile devices such as laptops, tablets, and cell phones. Daniel is CEO and co-founder of DefenderShield.com, an EMF shielding device company. Daniel's concern regarding the health impact of EMF emissions grew from over 30 years of engineering experience in the telecommunication industry, where he held a variety of executive positions at SAIC, Telecordia, AT&T, and Bell Labs. He is the co-author of the book Radiation Nation, The Fallout of Modern Technology. I read it. I highly, highly recommend it. You can learn more about Daniel at DefenderShield.com. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Wendy. I really appreciate you inviting me. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your background and how you came to run a company all about protecting us from EMF? Oh, um, I, for uh, 30 years or so, I used to run the laboratories for uh, the Bell system. And all the advanced technology that was being introduced into the networks would go through my laboratories. So I had a lot of background in the environment and the influence of electromagnetic radiation from electronics, lots of experience. Well, about four or five years ago, um, my sons were visiting and they're men and they, they uh, had laptops on their laps for hours. And my wife says, I want grandchildren. And she didn't know why she said it, but I, I thought about it a second. and I knew exactly why you should be worried about those things. Um, so um, I said, well, let's go find something that actually can protect your lap. I couldn't find anything. The, the, the products that were in the market understood a little bit of one side of the problem, but not the other side of the problem. So what I ended up doing is building my own. And I gave them to the kids, their friends wanted some, and then their friends wanted some. And all of a sudden, today we have a fairly large company and we provide shielding for electromagnetic radiation for many, many products in the marketplace. That's how we got started. And I wanted one too. I actually, before I even asked you to be a guest on the show, um, I had put it on my checklist or finally was checking off on my checklist, protecting myself from EMF. It's something that I knew was very, very harmful and I did all these things to protect my health yet I hadn't really focused on that aspect of my health, which is huge. It's protecting right. myself from electromagnetic fields and radiation. And yep. so one of the first things that I got, since I'm using my laptop all day long, was this uh, defense shield um, thing. I put my laptop on it and it protects me because I was starting to get irritation. I, I had my laptop on my, my legs, on my thighs sometimes. And I got to the point where I, I couldn't stand to have the computer on my thighs. They were always, I could just feel the, feel it. yeah, it yeah. was, it was really irritating my skin. I thought I'm going to get thigh cancer or something if I keep yeah, well, well, you know, well, you having know, my computer on my thighs. Yeah. Well, well you know, you think about with, with the men, it's the, the sperm that you're wor worried about after several hours of exposure, 25% of are immobile. 
But what no no one really realizes is that with females, um, two percent have um, tumor after extensive exposure, and and some of that percent becomes cancerous. This is serious stuff when you have these kinds of low level energy constantly emitting into the very sensitive parts of the body. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, it, it's serious stuff. And if you're a 12 year old girl and you're exposing your, uh, your womb, uh, uh, to the emissions, some scientists argue that it's a catastrophic event will occur in the future where it damages the DNA cell of the womb and it's subtending generations have this DNA damaged cells that are mutated into the subsequent generations. So it can be pretty serious. Yeah, so let's uh, talk about what EMF radiation is. For anyone listening that maybe isn't totally clear on it, what is EMF and what are some of the identifiable health issues that have been linked to EMF exposure? Well, well let's talk about what it is. N nature doesn't produce electromagnetic radiation except the Earth itself generates a tiny bit of emissions that are DC extremely low frequency emissions. It's a it's a it's a, a an emission that really we're as humans we've learned to live with fine. But the emissions we're talking about are the ones that are generated by the electronics that are around us, the the wiring, the cabling, the the refrigerator, the the microwave oven, the cell phone, all of these things that are around us. Uh, they're generating uh, two different forms of emission. One is where, as current flows in these products, they have a byproduct of emissions, and they call that extremely low frequency emissions. And then when they want to communicate with the Wi-Fi, your cell phone wants to communicate with the tower, your, your, your tablet wants to communicate with your Wi-Fi router, they communicate with an RF signal. So it's, it's man-made stuff. And why today? Because it's everything's all around us. It, it's becoming more serious because, what was it, two, 2005, there, less than 50% of the population had cell phones. By uh, nine years later, 99% of us had phones. It's unbelievable how much it's came, come, come into our lives. Uh, you asked about um, impacts. Um, some people put a cell phone to their head and it burns. Uh, some people um, put their hand near it and it hurts. Um, it stings. Um, uh, some people put it on their lap and it burns. Well, uh, th there are those headaches. There are the um, uh, eye hurts. There's a lot of symptoms related to that uh, 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 that you may feel um, actually 80% of us don't feel it. Only 20% of us do. And believe it or not, um, of that 20%, 80% are female. For some reason or another, women feel the emissions far more than men do. And, um, and for them, it can be very debilitating. As you know, electromagnetic hypersensitivity is, is fairly serious in some people's lives. Yeah, I notice it too when I'm holding my cell phone uh, after a period of time, my hand will just start kind of aching or just feels weird, like it's tingling or something and I have to put the cell phone down. And I think it's really a matter of awareness. I think yeah. people just don't attribute their hand hurting or their thigh being irritated or their headache to EMF exposure. And that's why you and I are trying to bring awareness to people about <laughs> the very real dangers of EMF exposure. And so let's talk a little bit about cancer and some of the other health issues that we're seeing in the research more and more that can be attributed to electromagnetic fields. Yeah, you know, um, there we have ADHD on the rise. We have cancers on the rise. Um, Here's a rule of thumb. When you put a cell phone in your hand, you, you never hear about anybody dying from cancer that was produced by emissions in the hand because it's very durable. But when you have it to your head, 
the frontal lobe is really, really sensitive. It's one of the more sensitive parts of the body. So the closer you have these emissions to your sensitive parts of the body that are soft tissue, watery tissue, that's the most dangerous. And you rarely heard me talk in the past about tumors. But last year, uh, it's very controversial. Um, and the, the science community, by the way, is pretty consistent now talking about um, the, the concerns of tumors emerging to cancers. Uh, but last year, the, uh, the National Toxicity uh, uh, Program, which is a division of the federal government, spent $25 million. They created an isolation chamber. It was an epidemiology study that was statistically significant. That is, they had thousands and thousands of subjects. And they looked at those that were uh, exposed heavily and those that were not. And there was a clear and evident distinctive difference between the two populations. Uh, those who were radiated had a 2% increase in frontal lobe cancers and heart cancer, believe it or not. And the uh, other population, of course, were normal. So now we have a fairly significant study done by the federal government. And I'm sure they really wanted that, that result to come out, but that's what came out. And, and that's really just substantiating what science has known for the last 10 years about the exposures and what they can do to you. Yes, and my uncle just died last month from a brain tumor. Oh. And he worked at Texas Instruments for a number of years. And he, he'd been battling it constantly for about yeah. 20 years. And, you know, there's a huge concern um, or a huge threat with EMF causing all kinds of tumors oh, and, yeah. all, and I'm really concerned about the 5G cell phone network oh, yeah. coming out right now we're on 4G and 5G is coming out it's all already been rolled out in Europe I believe and yeah. it's going to be much much stronger EMF radiation exposure yeah let me explain that to you um, um, the standard was developed 30 years ago for the strength of a, a signal um, it was an analog signal. That is, it was a wave that never stopped. It was always constant. So when it hit your body, um, it may have been okay, although I'd argue it's not. Uh, then, then we went to 2G, 3G, 4G. What is that? What they're doing is they're digitizing the signal. And the, the, they have this analog carrier, but then they're turning the signal on and off, on and off. That's hitting your cell on and off, on and off. What does that mean? Well, let's make an analogy. If, if you have a, a piece of concrete and you take a, a steel bar and you, and you put 10,000 pounds load on it constantly, it won't break. If you lift it up and drop it down, it breaks. Why? It's a jackhammer. Think of this, on and off, on and off to the cell. So there's some argument that it's the damage to the cells are far more dangerous these days from these emissions because of the on or function. Well, now you go to 5G. It goes from two, roughly 2.4 gigahertz up to 40 gigahertz. So the speeds are really, really faster. The energy is more compressed. And the way they send the data across is by, if you wanted to fill up your pool, you would put one hose into the pool. It, if you wanted to do it faster, you'd put a second hose to the pool. So now you have two streams of data. Well, guess what? In G5, that's what they do. They don't have one on off, on off. They have two on off, on offs. That's the difference. The energy levels are higher and there are constant jackhammer load on the cells. Very, very dangerous. And none of us know the long term impact. Yeah, but it not is clearly a problem. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be a massive increase in the yeah. rates of cancer. Yeah. Uh, watch that once the 5G is is un unveiled and has been in use for some time. Uh, it's just very, very, very concerning. And especially for those of us who are aware of EMF yeah. and attempting to protect ourselves, you can do that really well in your home. But when you're like, I have a lot of different uh, things in place and there'll be information in the show notes about uh, your products and, and other products that you can use to defend your body from EMF. 
a lot of great products out there on the market today. A lot of bad stuff too. A lot of garbage. Yeah, oh, so. yeah. <laughs> that's that's why I want to have people like yourself that to you yeah. know make recommendations for products that actually work. And right. uh, you know when you're walking out in, in the world away from like my home, which is a safe little cocoon, it's a big concern because your your cancer is a breakdown of cellular metabolism. And EMF is one of those uh, toxins that breaks down cellular metabolism, your body's ability to communicate, your body's energetic field. It disrupts your body's energy and information flow in the body. Oh, it, it, absolutely, Wendy. In fact, um, EMF is a toxin. There's just no doubt. In fact, the cell reacts to EMF as it does to a chemical sensitivity. Like if you have multiple chemical sensitivity where you smell a gas and you react to it, that's about 20%, by the way, of the population. Your cells are reacting exactly the same way if it's exposed to emissions. But what happens with EMF, particularly the stuff that's close to you, and the reason I got so involved was because um, when it's really, really close, that's when it's most dangerous. And what it's doing, it's hitting the cell and it's weakening the cell. When you weaken it, the argument is that's electromagnetic hypersensitivity. What does that mean? The one cell is not talking to the other cell, to, to passing the proteins. Your body starts breaking down. But in a latter stage, if, it, if, if, if you have a weakened membrane of the cell, it, 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 calcium um, penetrates the cell. And that's what causes mutation and D DNA damage. So there's that form of problem with great exposures like that. But then the other one, you heard me talk about ADHD. I get very upset about that because in those environments where our children are, um, they're being exposed to a, a lower energy level, but it's constant. I call that the thousand bees in the room. One bee won't kill you, and you're probably fine. But when you have a thousand bees in a room, that's a, a big problem. And that's what happens. You have all these transmitters around you, and you can't do much about it because they're there. So yeah. you're right. you got to be aware of your environment. Yeah, and I think it's really important for people to get a, an EMF detector and yes. go in their home, especially their child's room, and yes. see what kind of levels of EMF are being emitted by their television and your home oh, smart yeah. meter. If you have a cell phone tower nearby, um, people can be really shocked. And I have a lady at my my daughter's school. Her seven year old son has leukemia, and we yeah. know that childhood leukemia EMF is a huge factor in the development. Yeah, no of question about it. There's there's no doubt. <laughs> in fact, in war, they use emissions like this to dang to to damage. Um, um, uh, their uh, enemy. So, um, who was it? Truro was a uh, um, a physicist for the the UK, and uh, he used to develop war weapons, and he used electromagnetic radiation. He knew if he sent uh, thirty gigahertz, that this is the effect it will have on the body. So you got to be careful of exposures, uh, and and you're right. When 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 you when you're in your house, believe it or not, there's a lot of stuff you can do if you're aware. As you're pointing out, Wendy, um, there's a lot of things you can do. I, I talked about the most danger. The most danger is when it's touching your body, right? What am I going to do? Don't touch your body. You know, simply moving something away, one foot, eighty percent of the danger of that signal is gone. By four foot ninety eight. And, and so simple metrics like staying away from stuff, uh, reducing the time you do it, like, like when you dry your hair with your dryer, there's 100 milligauss coming out of that thing. There's a lot of emissions that are coming out. And so you got to think about, well, you got to dry your hair a little bit, but don't do it too much. So you reduce the time over that exposure. So a lot of things you can do around the house. And the cell phone companies and manufacturers, they're aware of the danger of these exposures. I think they've denied them for many years, but more recently they haven't been able to deny the, you know, the science coming out and the research coming out. And it says with your phone, you get a new phone to keep it an inch away from your body. 
I mean, I think that's pretty concerning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now they're talking about that. Uh, all of a sudden, um, and of course, an inch is not enough. You really do want to stay as far as you can. But the incestuous relationship of the the standard stuff to the um, to the service providers. Um, there was a fellow who was the head of a, a consortium uh, that that uh, that uh, were a uh, group influencing federal government standards. The standard was set and it was recently managed by the head of it, who used to be the head of the wireless group for the telephone companies. And when he saw 5G, he said, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So it became it was becoming more and more obvious the influence in the market um, by all these factions. Uh, but as you pointed out, when the federal government last year proved that a transmitter for a CDMA transmitter off a cell phone can damage the, the frontal lobe of your brain, all of a sudden it's starting to shift a bit. And EMFs dramatically impact our ability to sleep and get restorative sleep. Oh, yeah. I love talking about this. Yeah. And one thing I was reading the other day is that uh, EMFs, they vibrate and assault your pineal gland so that you're not able to produce enough melatonin. And I think there's a dramatic uh, problem with reduction in melatonin production from EMFs and blue light. And that's why there's such a rash of sleep issues that people have. I mean, the the quick fix right. is taking some melatonin, but you need to correct your environment, the blue light and the EMFs. Can you talk about that a little? Yes, um, before I do that, I want to give you another analogy. Your, your microwave generates 2.3 gigahertz signal. Uh, 2.3 gigahertz. Your Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz. When your microwave cooks a piece of meat, what it's doing is heating up the water between the cells. The cells oscillate, and that cooks the meat. Well, guess what? When you feel the heat to your brain or to your head, that is actually heating up your cells, and that's the function they're, they're doing it with. Uh, but the but and I talked about the impacts to the individual cell with the weakened membrane. What you're pointing out is whole system infrastructure can be uh, influenced negatively. And you're, you're right. It's not the melatonin that is impacted uh, because of sleep when the cell phones a foot away from you. It's the machine that creates the melatonin that's not functioning properly. And that's one example of, of processes within the body now um, being negatively influenced by the exposures. So you, you're exactly right. Never put a cell phone close to your, I don't care where you, why you have to answer the phone, never put it within four foot of your bed. In fact, my recommendation is always keep it in the other room. You don't need it after that. Make sure there are no other transmitting uh, emissions. Your laptop um, connected to your Wi-Fi. Take all of those things out. Even an analog clock generates 10, 15 milligauss. So you should move that away and look from a distance and, and you'll be better off. And as you pointed out, you'll sleep better. Yes. Yeah. I, anyone, any of my clients coming to me that have trouble sleeping, First yep. thing, look at your EMFs yep. in your home and the wireless and the smart meter and the, this and the that. There, yep. It's not enough to just turn off your wireless router because all your yep. 30 neighbors have wireless routers. You bet. There's a lot yep. of things uh, that you can do. So let's talk about some of those things. What ways can we protect our body from EMF? And I know you have a lot of products uh, to help yeah. with that. I actually, I actually don't think you have to buy our products necessarily. Mm -hmm. If you're aware of uh, what you need to be doing. Like you, you talk about smart meters. I, we get asked about that all the time. And, and so um, I asked them, where is the meter? And if it's right outside their bedroom on the outside wall, I said, move your bed. <laughs> because it, it's a simple thing, but you're being constantly loaded with a 1.9 gigahertz signal that's periodically going off all night. And that may impact the way your body reacts. So that's a simple thing. Move away from sources. Reduce use of sources. Um, well, I don't use a microwave, but um, if you're gonna use a microwave, just stay away from it. 
when you're running it, at least four foot away. Um, um, if you want to use a cell phone without any protection and you use it for a couple of minutes, I, I, I wouldn't worry about it. If you use it for three hours, you better look for a, some way of reducing that, uh, that emissions to your body. So simple things like, as you pointed out a minute ago, if, if you have a router, put a timer on the router, turn it off at night. And you won't even have to remember to turn it off. It'll turn off by itself and turn off on in the morning. You can take products, what, so long as you're, um, if there's no current flow, you're fine. And if there's no connection with a Wi-Fi or a cell tower, you're fine. And, and it's really simply looking around your environment and finding out what you can turn off. And if you can't turn it off, how far away can you be from it? Yes. Yeah. And so let's talk about why children are more susceptible to EMF oh. radiation than adults. Because I think our children are dramatically being affected by EMFs, especially when they have lots of uh, wireless routers in their classroom. And, uh, you know, so many children are being put on medications because the behavioral disorders that they have right. as a result of EMF. Yeah, there, there's no question in my mind. You're talking about a third. When you talk about a cell phone, it, it, the industry, the, the, the federal standard is 1.6 watts per meter squared. That's the maximum amount of power it's allowed to have. Um, and so um, when you have children that are using a cell phone, uh, what does that mean? That standard was made thir 35 years ago. It was... What is the thermal impact to the body using a cell phone against your head? It was for a six foot male. And all they worried about was the thermal impact. So what does that mean? The standard at 1.6 watts per meter squared says, if you put it against your head, it'll heat your head up to two degrees and that's okay. And it will penetrate the head by no more than one inch. That's what the standard was. They never considered the biological. Only six foot male. Today, every child has a cell phone in their back pocket. And they're using it their head. If they're young enough, six, seven years old, what's, what's going on? That signal that would enter a man's head by one inch goes right through the head. Why? The, the, the skulls are thinner. The, the, the matter is lighter. It, it, it's immature yet. And so that signal at the earliest of ages is going completely through their head. That, that is a serious concern, which none of us know the impact of until 20 years, until it's too late. But I can tell you the standard never considered the biological impact, cancer. It never considered that. It only worried about heat. And obviously, it was much more serious than that. So, so you recommend that mobile electronic devices can, you know, we use need to be properly shielded. So, let tell us about the importance of EMF shielding, and about your role in developing a, a state-of-the-art EMF blocking technology that's used in your Defender Shield product and other products that you have. Yeah, well, well, well what happened is, um, <laughs> believe it or not. Well, some of the stuff we use, I, I worked for Bell Labs many, many years ago, and, and we had to put a cable to, to, to Europe and, and underwater. And one of the problems was emissions it attracted fish. So we created a shielding material that actually shielded the jacket uh, of the cable so they, it wouldn't be eaten. So and fish like EMF? Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 are attracted I, to it? Who knew, right? <laughs> and, and so... We use that technology and a, and a couple other technologies. What we do is very simple. We stop the signal. We don't. We take the energy, and we don't allow it to pass through. We allow the energy to go far out, so you can still talk on your cell phone, for example. But we don't let it pass through. So we use a, a combination of, of various technologies that's patent pending technologies that uh, eliminate the signal completely. Um, and, and that's what um, we uh, and, 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 and you really want to make sure that if you choose to do that, you're picking products that uh, remove zero to 10 gigahertz and pretty soon 40 gigahertz with 5G. 
So that's how it works. And so what? tell us about your line of products. So you have the Defender Shield, uh, co- you know, laptop computer protector that you put your laptop computer right. on top of it. Tell us about that and exactly how it protects your body. Well, um, uh, wh- when you have it in your lap, the most vulnerable part of your body is downward. So we protect the downward flow of the signal. Um, and typically, um, the, the sensitive parts of the body that are in danger are at least 12 inches away. So by putting it in your lap, you're protected. Well, we also took that same concept and put it for tablets. So we have a, te- a tablet line um, and the um, same difference. It, it doesn't go down. It allows you to communicate with the Wi-Fi, but it, it doesn't penetrate uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the case itself. And then we have uh, for cell phones. And I got to tell you, when I was developing that product, there was a couple that had bought their 16-year-old daughter a cell phone case, and she wouldn't put it down. A year after that, she had cancer and died. You got to know this stuff is serious. And when you expose your children to this, so I created a, a, a shielding platform, which doesn't allow the signal to go to the to the frontal lobe. It can't get there. It, you can still talk to the tower and you're fine. But uh, we have a product for that. Uh, uh, just one note on that. I read that some cell phone covers, when you put some cell phone covers on, it actually can increase the Wi-Fi signal, not yours, but other products because yeah. they're covering up the, the Wi-Fi, it actually will make the signal stronger. Is that true? Actually, um, the, it, it, uh, cell, the way a cell phone works, it, it actually, uh, if a cell tower is really close, it's really low power. If it's a medium distance away, it's medium power. And if it's far away, it's really a high power, 1.6 watts. So what we do is we just absorb the signal. We don't interrupt the signal. So if the, the tower is close by, it's not going to be increasing. Um, but you got to be careful that there are other products that actually increase the signal levels and brings you more danger from using it. You're right. You got to be careful about that. Yeah. That's why I never put a, a cover on my, my cell phone. Some of the rubber or silicone covers, I, I had read that and I didn't want to increase my exposure by putting that. Right. Type exactly. of, but I, yeah. need to, I need to get one of your Defender Shield you, you cell really phone do. covers. If you're on the phone a lot, it's what... You may not need our tablet. You may not need our Defender Pad. But if you're on the phone and you're using that, you you really should consider the, the protection because there could be a biological long-term impact. Um, and you got to be careful about doing that. Um, so then we also have earbuds. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing them right now. Are you really? Oh, there you go. Cool. <laughs> yeah, we... we, we uh, most of the stuff on the market was not the best of quality. So we spend a, a lot of time in the lab trying to come up with a high quality that people would like to use and hear high fidelity music with. And we came up with the earbuds and we eliminate all the emissions to the head. Even though it's a low level, it's constant. And that's the, the, what we tried to solve, which we, we were able to do. Yeah, I as soon as I had some awareness around my usage of like the typical um, iPhone earbuds that, you know, come with iPhone that yeah. millions and millions of people are using, I was, you know, I'll go to bed kind of watching something on my right. computer with those in and you fall asleep sometimes. Yeah. And I, I realized I'm frying my brain by yeah. by doing that. And so I, I bought a pair of your Defender Shield uh, earphones because I use earphones a lot working with clients and doing right. podcasting. And uh, I just absolutely love them. And I have peace of mind that yeah. I'm not sending EMFs directly into my brain. Yeah. And it's duration. You know, it's a low level that's coming out of the other kind. But if you have it there for hours at a time, that's when it starts impacting you. And in fact, for the 20%, we talked about the electromagnetic hypersensitive. Some of them can't use it at all. They, they can feel it. Um, so um, yeah, I, uh, I do recommend if you're, if you're doing it a lot, you, you really should find, uh, use a speaker or 
uh, earbuds that uh, can bring protection to you uh, and safety. Do you have any other products that you want to talk about? Actually, you said blue light. We actually are almost releasing those shortly. We're, we're trying to complete our how do you protect the body um, 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 from direct exposures. And we have that. We have a baby blanket coming out for pregnant women. Oh, wow. Um, and that is like really important stuff. Uh, so we're trying to now expand a bit to bring more products to to, to the family uh, to, to provide protection that uh, they may need. And what is what is the baby blanket? How does that uh, protect the mother or the child? Um, it, what it does is it doesn't allow any emission to come through. Um, we, we actually use a, a fairly a highly costly materials that eliminate any exposures whatsoever. You don't need to be grounded. You don't need to uh, be far away from it. You can have a sauce right in front of you and it won't touch the baby. So and is that, that to put over the, the belly? To yeah, you the put baby? right over the belly uh, for that protection. And we're, that's in almost final design now. So we, we're trying to put that out soon. That's fantastic. That, that, yeah. I think that's just incredible. And I, I actually purchased a canopy uh, it's from a different company, but it's like a mosquito net with silver yeah. and copper threads in it yep. that I sleep in to, you know, completely protect myself and my daughter from any kind of EMF emissions that are right. very prevalent in Los Angeles. I live in central Los Angeles and it's yeah. just like EMF Armageddon over here. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you were pointing out before, your neighbors, uh, that's a low level signal, but it's always on. So when you have that, that's an RF screen. It's not an extremely low frequency screen. And uh, do you ground it? No, it's not grounded. Okay. It probably can absorb it. Um, no, it can conduct it until it loses energy. That's how it works. So it actually does help um, uh, you uh, to reduce, actually to eliminate the RF that's around you and your daughter. Those are smart. I think it's really important, especially if you live in an apartment building yeah, where that's, that's a problem. all of your neighbors have Wi-Fi routers. Yeah. It's not enough okay. to just turn off your Wi-Fi router at night. Uh, I, I, it is terrible. Um, you know, with your you go with your meter, it's terrible. Um, it, it's all around you, um, and it's always there. Um, so uh, in those kind of situations, there's no doubt finding ways of managing that with the canopies, for example, is one example. Others use grounding um, pads and things like that, and those are good. But here's a point. If you're gonna use a grounding pad or anything else, don't have any a cell phone close by you because a cell phone keeps transmitting. If you have a ground, like you have a ground, and, and you can actually feel the ground. There's static electricity in the air. And, and so when you ground yourself, your body normalizes. And, 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 and everything balances out the way it should be. But when you have a cell phone and it's close to your head when you're sleeping and you're grounded, you're still gonna have the problem with melatonin because it's transmitting into your brain. Uh, so you gotta watch the way you manage that. Yeah, I heard something that because in the United States we have a problem with dirty electricity with our electrical system and that with a grounding pad if it's plugged in to an, an electrical outlet, it's fine in Europe, but here there could be a problem with the electric, dirty electricity being transmitted in the grounding pad. Is there, is there any truth to that that you're aware of? Well, uh, the dirty electricity refers to a lot of things. Um, most houses by federal code now have to have a six foot ground. In addition to the ground, to the network, it has to have a six foot ground in the ground. If it's properly grounded, most of the time you're sort of okay. When you have wiring running in a wall, stay away from it. Just keep a little distance and you're fine. Um, it, it, it's a low level, um, three to five giga, uh, 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 um, um, milligauss emission, being a little bit away, it drops to almost nothing and you're fine, it doesn't bother you. Um, if you. If you turn your lights off, no current flows and it's even less. So you, you're sort of okay if you're trying to find the sources of the power being consumed. Um, and, um, and with dirty electricity, again, it's managing the, the appliances in your space. 
and you reduce that simply by doing it. And if it's not properly grounded, make sure you have your electrician properly ground you because mm. chances are if it's dirty in your space, it's not properly ground. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure there's there's plenty of homes out there that haven't yeah. been Older up, up to code. They, they, they don't have the six foot copper pot pipe that's into the ground to, to bring that grounding for you, the positive ground. Yeah. Yeah. I've even thought of, uh, I haven't done it yet, but turning off all of my electricity at night, just turning off the whole circuit just to completely mitigate any kind of exposure from electricity. Yeah, electrically sensitive people do that. Uh, and the reason why is because even really low stuff can bother them. Generally, it's uh, over precaution that we measure. Um, uh, and the reason why is for you to get that exposure, current flowing, power is being used somewhere. Just make sure that stuff that around you is not being used and it reduces the whole household use of power and the emissions related to it. And I think it's, you know, wise to point out that anyone who is chronically ill or suffering yeah. from chronic fatigue or they've gone to the doctor after doctor and they, you know, the doctor can't really figure out what's wrong or have any solutions, you want to be looking at EMF sensitivity as, oh, this, yeah. as a contributor. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we actually have a lot of customers th that are pretty sensitive and we talk them through, for example, when they use a laptop close to them, they always feel like a headache, their fingers hurt. And so we, we, we suggest that you take the laptop, put it in a quarter, two foot away in the corner of your desk, get a portable uh, 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 keyboard, get a screen, an uh, 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 independent uh, screen, uh, push it away from you. And you'll find just by making it ethernet connected, not Wi-Fi connected, just by pushing it away a little bit, that makes the biggest difference for, for, for you. Yeah, simple management of your time and, and, and space to the emission sources really does make a big difference. And you have a book out called Radiation Nation. Can you tell yes. us about that? Yes, actually, the reason I wrote that book with my son was because there's a lot of mis, misinformation out there and it's not that complicated. We, we can figure out what's influencing our, 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 our lives um, if we know the sources, if we understand what's going on. I also wanted to make pretty clear what's our current understanding of these emissions from a scientific perspective. Because what I was finding is I would talk to researchers and they didn't know what the practitioners were doing. And the practitioners didn't know what the researchers were doing. It was like uh, I, I, uh, I had um, one of the most well-known radiologists in the country say to me, I didn't know that uh, non-ionized radiation can break down my cell. <laughs> he only knew ionized radiation from x-rays. He knew that you die when you're x-rayed, but he didn't realize it's the same stuff. DNA damages your cell, you know, the, by these emissions. And so I, I was trying to get people to understand what it was. You make a choice for how you want to deal with it. And uh, Radiation Nation uh, was written because we tried to answer a lot of questions to, to a lot of people that were learned in the past were trying to seek out the right information and understand it. I talk about grounding. But I also talk about what I told you before. It, it's not just grounding you got to be aware of. You got to be aware of where your sources are as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I have a really interesting way that I protect my body from radiation. You uh -huh. might not have heard of this before, but this is a My Health device. Uh -huh. And it works bioenergetically. It sends information on global scalar waves. And I have one. There's one for cell phone radiation. It will protect your cells and your body from cell phone radiation. They have one for a microwave, far infrared computer, um, just EMF wow. in general, and one for air travel. Because when I you travel on a plane, you're exposed oh, yeah. to a tremendous amount of radiation. Oh, yeah. no question. And I set this on air travel, and it protects your body from the radiation. Wow. And it's cool. it's amazing technology. It's from a company called Ness Health, and I use this every single day. Uh, it's it's absolutely incredible. I'll I'll tell you more about it after we uh, after yeah, we. Definitely finish the podcast but yeah it's one of my little secret weapons that i right. use yeah for i mean and that's a solid 
um, technology. My guess is the canceling technology, um, which is a good thing to have because that environment where is getting worse. It's not getting better. <laughs> That's why I called it radiation nation. All of a sudden, we're a nation full of radiation. Yes, yeah. yes, and it's yeah. only going to get worse. It's yeah. Only, so you only have gets worse. you. If you want to be healthy, you have got to have this on your radar. So tell the listeners where we can go for more information about protecting our families from EMF radiation. Uh, uh, DefendeShield.com is a company that um, I started. Um, and um, DefendeShield.com is where you can find all the products we spoke about. But in addition to that, we have learning centers, publication centers. So if you want to learn something more about the problems that we've been talking about today, uh, Wendy, you can go there and you can find a lot of information that's up to date. In fact, our blog, we just released an ADHD uh, study uh, report. We, we constantly try to keep up to date so everyone understands what we currently understand is the is the issues related to this stuff. So and if you want um, to learn a little bit more about uh, uh, Radiation Nation, you can go to um, uh, Amazon. Uh, we were actually a top seller on Amazon for the longest of time um, uh, and then uh, get it in book form or, or, or getting it in electronic form or go to Radiation Nation book and we sell it on there as well. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I, I really appreciate your coming on. This is such an important topic. It really that is. That we have to bring more awareness of, about it to people because more and more people are going to be getting sick and having trouble sleeping, not getting restorative sleep. And over the long term, that makes them sick. And the cancers and leukemia and other problems that are affecting so many families today and right. this is and we're using it younger and younger too. Yes. That's the when I grew up, you know, there was no emissions at all in my life. Um when when my grandchildren are growing up, they're exposed their whole life, entire life. So it's getting worse for us and you need to be aware of of the potential dangers we're in uh, as a society. Absolutely. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Everyone go visit DefenderShield.com and take advantage of his wonderful product line to help protect yourself from EMF. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast.